Good morning and welcome to our morning prayers on Friday the 5th of November from St Peter's Church in Ipsley. If it's your birthday today, I do wish you a happy birthday and hope you enjoy your special day. If it's your birthday at the weekend, I hope you have a lovely day too. Our readings today are Psalm 66 and Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 to 23. Let us pray. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And our first reading is Psalm 66. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praises to you. They sing praises of your name. Come and see what God has done. His awesome deeds for mankind. He turned the sea into dry land. They pass through the waters on foot. Come, let us rejoice in him. He rules forever by his power. He eyes, his eyes watch the nations. Let not the rebellious rise up against him. Praise our God, all peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. He has preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping. For you, God, tested us. You refined us like silver. You brought us into prison and laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us to a place of abundance. I will come to your temple with burnt offerings and fulfill my vows to you. Vows my lips promised and my mouth spoke when I was in trouble. I will sacrifice fat animals to you and an offering of rams. I will offer bulls and goats. Come and hear all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and has heard my prayer. Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The theme of this psalm is that God answers prayers individually and as a body of believers. We should praise and worship God and bring honour to his name. The psalmist understood that God was not only God over Israel, but the whole world. Therefore, it was good and fitting for him to call everyone to joyfully praise God. Song is not the only way to praise God, but it is one of the chief ways. Giving praise means we focus on the person, deity or thing being praised, whereas giving thanks may just focus on what we have received and therefore self becomes the primary subject. The psalmist gives practical guidance for those who want to praise God, telling them specifically what to say. It does not mean that we will end up praising God in an unfeeling mechanical way. It means that we need to help to truly praise God from the heart. 
verse 3. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. This awesome and powerful God has enemies, but through his great power, they will be conquered and brought to submit themselves to God. And he may be praised in recognition of his ultimate triumph over all the earth and in his worthiness to receive the worship and praises that rightly belong to him. Verse 5 says, come and see what God has done. Here the psalmist has turned to the Holy Scriptures and remembered how God showed his power by bringing Israel through the Red Sea. God saved the Israelites then, and he continues to save his people today. The psalmist called all the earth to observe the great words of works of God and to give him praise. Just as fire refines silver in the smelting process, trials refine our character. God blesses his people, but sometimes the blessing is in a difficult testing. These times of trial and testing bring us a new and deeper wisdom, helping discern truth from falsehood and giving us the discipline to do what we know is right. Many people wonder why we want to praise God, given some of the difficulties we face. But as we continue to put our trust into God, he will deliver us from our difficulties. We have to remember that the trials and difficulties help us realise that life is a gift from God, to be cherished, not a right to be taken for granted. Verse 13 says, I will come to your temple with burnt offerings and fulfil my vows to you. The psalmist praised God by promising to bring certain sacrifices or gifts to the altar in gratitude for God's work when he was in trouble. He would not sin by failing to bring these. We should also be aware that we must keep our promises. God always keeps his and wants us to follow his example. So next time you make a promise, be careful to follow through on whatever you have promised to do. Verse 16 says, Come and hear all you who fear God. The vow of the psalmist was not fulfilled through sacrifice alone. He also had an obligation to proclaim God's goodness, to declare what he has done for his soul. No one should think that God could be, be persuaded merely through sacrifices or vows. It is important to make clear that the psalmist did not only sacrifice with burnt offerings, but was also obedient to God. He did not hold on to sin in his heart, and we must not hold on to ours either. Because we continue to do, do wrong, we must continually confess our sins. If we don't repent our sins, we place a wall between us and God. Our attitude should be one of confession and obedience. We often take the privilege of prayer for granted. The psalmist understood how wonderful it was that God received his prayer and how it made him realise that God should be praised. Amen. And our next reading is Philippians chapter 4 verses 10 to 23. Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 to 23. Thanks for their gifts. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. 
I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. But even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid more than once when I was in need. Not that I desire your gifts. What I desire is that more be credited to your account. I have receive full payment and have more than enough. I am amply supplied now that I have received from Ephroditus the gifts you sent. They are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. To God and Father be glory for ever and ever. Amen. Final greetings. Greet all God's people in Christ Jesus. The brothers and sisters who are with me send greetings. All God's people here send you greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Paul notes that his experiences have taught him to be content with, with whatever material blessings he has. This reliance on the power of Christ not only allows believers to be content, it produces peace in our relationships with other Christians. This also requires a deliberate choice to set our attention on positive things. Paul extends sincere thanks to the Philippians for their generous support. At real cost, they have given themselves and all they possessed. Although they were poor, they had given sacrificially more than Paul expected. They wanted to help and support him in his ministry. The amount we give is not important as why and how we give. God does not want us to give gifts grudgingly. Instead, he wants us to give as the church in Philippi gave, out of dedication to Christ, love for fellow believers, the joy of helping those in need as well as the fact that it was simply the good and right thing to do. Maybe we all need to think about whether or not our giving measures up to the standards set by his church in Philippi. The Philippians had supported him from the very first, ever since he went there on his second missionary journey. He loved the growing church there, and rejoiced over its progress and growth. Even though Paul was confident in God's provision for his needs, he expressed thanks to his readers for their concerns. Their acts of generosity were a way of taking some of Paul's hardship on themselves. And of course, their acts were the way God fulfilled his promise to provide. Their kindness was an expression of the fruit of the Spirit, which you can read about in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23, and reflected Paul's teaching elsewhere regarding kindness to other, others 
Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. T 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24. And Titus verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 5. We are to act in love towards our brothers and sisters in Christ, just as God acted in love by sending his son to die for our sins. We are to imitate Christ's compassionate, forgiving attitude. Let love guide our lives. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. Be thankful and we are to keep God's word in us at all times and live as Jesus Christ's representatives. Beyond money, Paul was probably sent other helpful items. Though unknown, those other gifts may have involved food, clothing supplies, or personal items meant to assist Paul in his work. Paul calls these gifts a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. Just as proper Old Testament offerings were considered acceptable sacrifices that please God, the Philippians' gifts to Paul provided God the same satisfaction. Believers no longer lived under the requirements of the sacrificial system, but could bring joy to the Lord through other expressions of worship, such as sharing of gifts and resources with Paul. In his conclusion of thanks to his readers, Paul encourages them. Paul was confident that God would meet their needs because they were generous in their giving. This is not a promise of wealth or even of an easy life. Rather, the concept of need has to be considered according to God's will. What we need and what we want are not always the same thing. That being said, God tends to bless those who will use the resources they have according to his purposes. Their needs would be met through Christ, the one who made and controlled all things. They would never lack with Christ as their provider. By focusing our minds on Christ, we will learn unity, humility, joy, and peace. We will also be motivated to live for him. We can, can live confidently for him because we have the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ within us. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we are your unworthy servants. Give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honour and glory throughout all ages. Amen. He heals the broken hearted and binds up their wounds. We pray for everyone we know and those known only to you, Lord, who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. 
We pray that during the long hours of night, they will turn to you for comfort and support. We pray for the doctors and nurses looking after them, that they will use their gifts of healing to restore them to full health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you wept when your friend Lazarus died. Please dry the tears of all those we know who mourn the loss of a loved one. We pray especially for Jane, Rachel and Louise as they mourn for Tony. Bless those who mourn with the comfort of your love that they may face each new day with hope and the certainty that nothing can destroy the good that has been given. May their memories become joyful, their days enriched with friendship and their lives encircled by your love. For those who comfort being both the words they use and all that's left unspoken. Fill each heart with your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, we confess our need for you today. We need your healing and your grace. We need hope restored. We need to be reminded that you work on behalf of those you love, constantly, powerfully, completely. Forgive us for trying to fix our situations all on our own. Forgive us for running all different directions and spinning our wheels to find help, when true help and healing must be found first in you. Forgive us for forgetting how much we need you above everyone and everything else. We come to you and bring you the places that we are hurting. You see where no one else is able to fully see or understand. You know the pain we've carried, the burdens, the cares. You know where we need to be set free. We need to be reminded of your constant love, healing and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our risen Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining me today and all this week. I do hope that you'll be able to join us again for morning prayer next week from Monday to Friday. If you're able to, please do come along to church on Sunday for our service at 10.30. If not, please tune in to the recording on YouTube, also at 10.30. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, Guide and strengthen us by your spirit, that we may give ourselves to his service and live this day in love to one another and to you, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>